Well, regarding the situation in Syria, okay? I haven't talked about it because basically what has been happening uh, prior to this, also in Libya, I might add, is just perfectly go going right along with the uh, perceived plan uh, of the project for the American century. So everything is proceeding right on target, essentially. So please look that document up and see which nations should be targeted uh, in terms of Western domination uh, of the global hemisphere, so to speak. Now, you know, when I look at these stories, I, I look at various news sources. And, uh, um, and, and after a while, you know, you could perceive especially in the Western media, mainstream media. I mean, the bias is so obvious at this point. It, it becomes essentially laughable uh, when when everybody is quoting, you know, the uh, uh, some some um, organization which calls itself, uh, what is it now? Um, the uh, the uh, center, the, the Center for Human Rights, Center for uh, Syrian Human Rights, or something. You know, this is this is a singular guy operating out of the UK. You know, he's quoted constantly throughout all the Western media. He operates through you know some barber shop or or his clothing shop in the UK, and he's obviously you know <laughs> he's obviously part of the opposition. Um, supported by who knows who, and this is just a, you know, it's basically a PSYOP operation. Uh, anybody who's been paying any attention to any of this at all would know that all these various sources being quoted in the Western media uh, are not even being uh, vetted or checked out. No, what they say is basically taken verbatim and put out as um, so-called news, uh, which, like, which is more likely, uh, you know, Western instigated propaganda and nothing else, you know. And uh, I mean, it's what we're talking about here is a very dangerous geopolitical game, uh, a global game, I might add, um, in which you know the the uh, uh, the western powers seek uh, dominance uh, and ultimate power over what is going to come next during the next 100 years let's say so uh you need to be of course equally uh equally uh discerning when you get news when you listen to news sources like uh, RTV, you know, Russia state television, um, and television or news sources from Iran, news sources from, you know, China, and so on. These are very large political games which are being played on what uh, Brzezinski called the grand chessboard. And that is precisely what's going on. <laughs> the only thing uh, that I'm afraid of uh, is that this entire notion of Western supremacy uh, globally, you know, is essentially built out of a gigantic hubris. Uh, it is built on um, <laughs> so many lies, it can no longer hold up to any scrutiny whatsoever. Now, mind you, you know, the, the 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 Chinese government, the Russians, they have their own national interests at heart, and uh, you know they're they're uh, they're going to be telling you lies also. But as long as you have a variety of news sources, um, and you discover their biases, only then, only then, can you form uh, an even remotely rational opinion about what is going on and I would uh, I would add by the way you uh, uh, 
you people who are interested in, you know, foreign affairs, foreign policy, everybody should read Asia Times um, on a regular basis because um, the, <laughs> the variants of opinions and facts on Asia Times are probably um, the best you'll get. You'll see a range of opinions. Um, and after that, I totally opposing opinions, by the way. And after that, you can, you can, you can discern, you know, who's biased towards whom and, you know. So, yeah, I mean, this whole thing in Syria is a foregone conclusion now. The Western uh, powers want, uh, the Syrian government to fall. Uh, I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm not in favor of Assad and in, in, in his uh, very dictatorial and autocratic regime in any way, you know. I mean, it's a known, I mean, <laughs> Syria is known for torturing their prisoners and all this shit. It has been for years. In fact, the United States itself sent its own Guantanamo prisoners to Syria to be tortured. You know, and that's the thing. Uh, and now, you know, of course, uh, it's it, it it serves their interest to destabilize the regime because they basically, but they want to go after Iran. You know, so this is the bigger picture. And uh, I mean, there is just so much hypocrisy all around. Okay, so much hypocrisy, and uh, this is. You know, don't believe for one minute that this has anything to do with humanitarian concerns or human rights. It has nothing to do with it. And it has nothing to do with establishing democratic regimes in the Middle East. No, it's just, it's basically, all, it, all this is about is moving pawns around uh, on the big chessboard. That's all it is. And unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, real humans are going to pay the price for all this. Because I can't imagine that anybody, you know, living in Egypt uh, or in Damascus today, they don't want to take sides. They want to stay out of this mayhem, you know. Nobody... Nobody wants to get their throats slashed by any faction, you know. And if you think that the incoming government, uh, it's basically a foregone conclusion by now, okay, that Assad is going to be, you know, he's gone basically already. Um, once the West uh, in that region uh, and with the with the with the cooperation of the Saudis, once anyone out of that region, they they're basically going to be you know they're dust. Okay, so but if you think that these incoming uh, <laughs> rebels, you know, in order to fulfill a power, they call it a power vacuum. Well, what do you think? What, what do you think human rights are going to look like in Syria after that day? Okay? You think these incoming rebels who will be, you know, be getting recognition from Western governments fairly soon, you know, just as it happened in Libya, uh, do you think they're going to be not imposing torture uh, or extrajudicial killings on their opponents? Yeah, I don't think so. In fact, the entire human rights situation in Libya has pretty much deteriorated massively, okay, in Libya. And then most Americans can't even tell the difference between Libya and Syria. They think it's the same country. Uh, you know, they don't pay attention because, oh, well, the two names sound kind of the same, you know. And, uh, but you see, that's the entire objective of all of this, is for people just to not pay attention anymore, just to 
just to say, oh, fuck this. You know, I'm not going to listen to this stuff anymore. That is precisely the objective. They don't want you to think about anything anymore. You know, they want you to go to uh, Batman movies and, and uh, they want you to play the video games. Uh, so, uh, so you can be kept distracted uh, until, you know, uh, you know, the next power outage or something, you know. I mean, somebody has to keep the young people distracted and uh, non-violent, so to speak, uh, to keep them entertained until the whole damn system comes crashing down on their heads. So, yeah, that's, it's basically, it's all designed, it's all designed for you to become uninformed, basically, to not give a shit anymore. I mean, I'm almost at that point where I say, fuck U.S. politics, you know. Now, I may say that. Uh, I may not participate in the next election anymore, but that doesn't mean I don't care, and that doesn't mean I don't know what's going on, okay? All I know is that everything that we're hearing is completely corrupt, and that's enough. And we should absolutely make sure that our children are well informed about the grand manipulation that's taking place here. Because we can speak from experience, because all of us have previously been manipulated to the same degree. To the same degree. And I'm not so sure if the internet <laughs> is going to pose a solution to any of this whatsoever, because obviously the Internet is now being controlled by the same corporations uh, which were controlling everything else in the past. So that's my take uh, on this uh, grand chessboard uh, situation, you know. I just hope ordinary people uh, can somehow, you know, avoid the violence and hunker down and not get involved in it. And don't forget, no way, nobody that I've seen on the Internet has even mentioned this, okay? Please don't forget that during the Iraq War, you know, many Iraqis fled to Syria, okay? They had no other place to go. And now they're stuck in Syria and facing the same damn situation all over again. These are just ordinary people, you know.